As a child, I lived on the outskirts of a town with my mother in southern Mexico. Our cabin was next to a nature reserve which had been planted by people many years before I was born. The forest looked completely natural to me and it hosted countless wildlife species. Sadly, most recently, this forest hasn't been properly protected and it has greatly deteriorated due to illegal logging. However, the possibility of being able to plant a natural-looking forest by hand got stuck in my mind ever since. I started becoming more interested in tree planting about three years ago. I was very happy to read many amazing, successful tree planting stories. Most native trees can be planted from just one seed with limited resources by ordinary people like us. Many people around the world have been doing so already. Hadaf Payeng, known as the Forest Man of India, is a humble environmental activist who, since 1979, has been turning a barren wasteland on a river island called Majuli in northeast India into a lush 550-hectare forest all by himself. There's a beautiful documentary called Forest Man, about Payeng's life and work. I was particularly intrigued by a section of the film which shows Payeng walking barefoot, calmly collecting tree seeds and branches from his surroundings, and then literally digging in dry sand just with a stick in order to plant those seeds and rootless tree cuttings he gathered while casually answering his mobile phone. Could tree planting be this straightforward and inexpensive, I wondered? Once a desolate sandbar, this green nature reserve in Majuli Island now hosts many animal species, thanks to one man. Imagine what we could achieve collectively. I am sure that at least some of us have heard of the renowned Green Belt Movement, a grassroots movement which was founded in 1977 by Kenyan-born social, environmental, and political activist Wangari Matai. Matai empowered women and children to learn through trial and error how to grow a variety of species by collecting seeds from nearby trees and growing them in community-led nurseries. They would then plant them permanently in their own farms, in their towns, and in the surrounding countryside. As they learned, they shared resources and knowledge within their communities, a true human synergistic movement. Over time, like the many woodlands they planted, the Green Belt movement itself has grown. They collaborate with many groups in order to teach people, mostly women, various forestry and permaculture practices, empowering them to grow their own food while protecting natural water resources forests, and local wildlife, fighting the climate breakdown and enriching their communities on many levels. Since Matai started the movement decades ago, over 51 million trees have been planted and more than 30,000 people, mostly women, have been trained in Kenya and abroad. In 2004, in recognition of her work, Wangari Matai was the first African woman to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. I find her words very moving. You cannot protect the environment unless you empower people to inform and help them understand that the resources are their own and they must be protected. I was also very moved by Felix Fink Boehner's story. In 2007, inspired by the Greenbelt movement at just nine years old, Felix Finkbeiner decided to plant a tree in his school in Germany as he launched the Plant for the Planet campaign. Felix sparked a worldwide children's movement. At first, other European kids followed him. Plant for the Planet promotes the idea that children around the world could plant many trees. In 2018, they launched the Trillion Tree campaign, working closely with ecologists Thomas Crowder and his colleagues at ETH CERC who were able to provide machine learning models to work out the feasibility of enough land outside of urban and agricultural areas for one trillion new trees. 
but it was through Plant of the Planet that children became involved in growing forests around the world. I was very happy to read that they're currently planting one tree every 15 seconds in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, not far away from where I'm originally from, restoring barren land back to jungle. If a nine-year-old boy can motivate people to tree plant, so could I, I thought. As I became more and more interested in reforestation and joined several discussion groups on social media, these two images kept appearing over and over again on my feed. They capture the exact same spot in Brazil before and after renowned Brazilian photographer Sebastião Salgado and his wife Lelia Wanek Salgado's reforestation initiative. In the late 1990s, they began transforming a depleted cattle ranch back into its original state of subtropical rainforest. All of these stories gave me a bit of hope. However, something that really got stuck with me is that Plant for the Planet, Crowder's Lab, and countless environmentalist messages are all saying the same thing, that reforestation is not solving the climate crisis. It is just buying humanity the time to get the problem solved. Alongside tree planting, we must cut carbon and other greenhouse gas emissions drastically and urgently while protecting the ecosystems we currently have. So, driven by my deep anxiety about the climate crisis, and therefore my concern for my son's future growing up in a decaying world, I started a grassroots community tree planting group with many like-minded friends who, like me, were eager to sound the alarm on the climate breakdown by taking constructive measures. Did you know it takes approximately just five minutes to plant a sapling with the right conditions, preparation, professional teams, and groups of volunteers working together? One of the hardest things is often finding access to available land on which to plant those trees. Urban infrastructure is inhibiting, such as underground pipes, cables, and water courses. Research and working in partnership with key stakeholders is therefore fundamental. By forming a tree planting group, Bambury Trees, we can apply to receive thousands of free saplings from brilliant schemes within the UK, such as the Woodland Trust and the I Dig Trees program. We hold free workshops to show people how simple it is to grow trees from seed, offering tree planting kits and helping the local community to learn and enjoy the whole process from seed to sapling to tree. Hundreds of potted native seedlings are continuously nurtured by us and distributed to landowners. We learn as we go. Like the women from the Green Belt Movement in Kenya, we observe our ecosystems, using what we have at hand and sharing knowledge and resources amongst us. As we have at Payeng, we also hope to provide environments for wildlife to enrich the ecology around us. Social media has enabled us to reach and involve many people of all ages and diverse cultural roots. So far, we have planted hundreds of native trees and bushes at local schools with the students and teaching staff. How wonderful for children to be close to nature in an urban setting. In the past three years, we have also been busy planting thousands of saplings from the previously mentioned schemes in designated locations, such as public parks. Our district and town councils have welcomed our input. We have collaborated with other nearby groups and joined an umbrella organization called Oxfordshire Trees for the Future. 1,000 trees came from the Save the Oaks program, a volunteer-run group which rescued and distributed thousands of saplings in the UK, which would have been destroyed. During the global pandemic, this organization helped the environment while honoring those who have lost their lives to COVID-19. As an individual, I aim to keep building a sense of community by enhancing local biodiversity together with many other people. 
these woodlands could grow on any available land, no matter how small. And I believe this model could be replicated by many more communities elsewhere in the UK. I am currently growing a food forest in raised beds at our community garden, a project managed by our local community action group in cooperation with many other groups. It is located in an urban area, in what used to be a mechanics yard, right next to an extremely hectic junction in our town. Forest gardening is a sustainable and productive food system, which incorporates a mix of trees, bushes, herbs, flowers, and other plants to create a multi-layered woodland habitat, which provides food for humans and wildlife. Community tree planting and gardening exemplify the concept of human synergy. Individuals and organizations working in symbiosis to create positive change. We are one small network inside a larger network. If children across the world inspired by nine-year-old Felix can come together to plant trees, anyone can plant a tree. And what's more, by forming or joining tree planting community groups, we can develop diverse ecosystems within our own communities. Together, we can transform our environment for the better. Thank you.